we're starting slow today, right? Because we did not come up with a topic because it's a shitty ass week. I mean, it's a you know, shitty ass week. Okay, I thought I was tripping. I thought I was the only one that had a really. I was like, what's going on? Well, I noticed that we were also quiet on the text thread. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. obviously it's a lot going on, but I was like, dang, we ain't even had nothing to say. Mercury, re- do you guys believe in Mercury retrograde? Yeah. I know, Melanie. Yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah, I feel like Mercury Retrograde like just came and just kicked me right from the back. Like, back. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been really ghetto over here. <laughs> <laughs> no facts. Yeah. And like, literally, technology has been fucking up all yes. week. Like, Jared's phone just stopped working one day. Like, yeah. Just really? All together. Oh, wow. couldn't, I couldn't even call him. The other day. The yeah. I couldn't even call him. I'm, it's, not, it's the aliens. <laughs> it took me two hours to uh, make it real the other day for this brand thing that we're doing. He wasn't feeling it. it. Just, no, it just kept deleting. Yeah. I would oh. be halfway done and it would be like, delete. And I'm like, it's due now. <laughs> I was like, oh God, it's this is due now. now. I, have, so, I did the same <sighs> thing. Chia and I were recording something I normally remember like, what format and i was like why did i just record this whole ass long ass video in the wrong frame mm. it's supposed to be in portrait i did it in landscape oh my god don't you, hate you do you it over stuff like that? no i did not i you edited like edited it, half, it? The, half yeah. the video is missing from i don't care i'm yeah. not redoing that shit. i have four kids the worst is when I, there's times like i'll do it like let's say somebody's not there to record something and then i have to flip the camera but then they're like oh the brand is backwards and i'm like damn it mm, i like I your nails girl they Thank look you. so good I always Thank look you, good. Listen, Thank the you. time, I don't know how you have this time. Because she always has the fiercest fingernails. I, I know. You have, I have the fingernail sound house. effect? No, I go to her. But she's right up the street for me. Um, so, yes, technology is crap. Um, but, like, our world is is doing too much right In now. Shambles. In shambles. Yeah. And, like, how are y'all coping? How much, you know, we all have to just move forward because we have families and we have responsibilities but what does that look like or in my case move away yeah Ooh, stop I, will move saying that. I will move back to canada quickly. that's rude it's, it's really so know. rude none no you need can, to stay here and suffer with us easily in listen. solidarity we can okay sister wives you guys can all move Ooh, at home that's I'm, I'm, i've, I've had it, it with first. the united states like mm. i having a point of reference of living somewhere else and i'm not going to say that canada is perfect mm-hmm. but the issues that i have been faced with since living in this country have been so depleting and it, it's foreign to me like I have friends obviously who are American, many of us here, right? Mm -hmm. And a husband. And like people are just like, you know, this is America. This is the way that it is. And I'm just like, but y'all just keep getting away with it. Like we just sit by and watch shit be fucked up. Yep. I'm sorry. I don't have any clean language today. And it's just like, how, how is this? Like the rest of the world is looking at the United States crazy. And it's like policies here, just the things like the, the hypocrisy, the corruption. I just like what? And I know that exists everywhere else. But this to me is like the only country where you literally are like, they're like, yeah, what what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Nothing. I remember, Mm -hmm. you probably felt this too, when I was traveling a lot um, with makeup and I would always go to different countries and like talk to different people and they literally look at the US like we're just a big old joke, especially when Donald Trump Trump was, um, we were in Mm -hmm. New Zealand and it was on every single TV show and everybody's just laughing and I was like, oh my God, Mm -hmm. we are literally like a joke. It's a reality show. Yeah. 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 And and I just like, I, I just don't understand like how it's possible. Mm-hmm. And like I asked myself, like I have a daughter now. We're talking about Roe versus Wade being turned overturned. Like I'm sitting here being like, what? Mm-hmm. Girl. Like, what are we, what, where are we as lovey, lovey Ajayin Jones, mm-hmm. um, she she said this country's hustling backwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, like with quickness, they're hustling backwards. Mm-hmm. And I just don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel like when Trump got elected, we all felt like, what the hell is happening? And now he's gone and shit is getting crazier. Are we hustling backwards, though? Or has it always been like this? I feel like... I feel like... I'm going to say this. Damn, that's so crazy. I I feel like this country is very consistent. And then things happen that provide a nice illusion Mm -hmm. and people buy into that. And then something else happens where then you realize nothing has really changed. Mm -hmm. Like integration was an illusion and Obama was an illusion. And I feel like these things are nice because they do give us hope and they're Mm -hmm. needed, but it's pretty consistent. I think that's the interesting word is hope. I think that Mm -hmm. like, I have been trying to ask myself that, right? Like, has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Has it changed at all? Right. When I think about what my mom said, which I think I shared with y'all about how like, she feels like racism and the incidents have gotten worse. And I was Mm -hmm. so surprised by that, especially in schools. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about the fact that then they had hope 
Mm-hmm. They were working toward change. Mm-hmm. They saw little bits of it and they said, okay, we're just going to keep pushing on, even if the change is incremental. And now it's like hopeless or it feels mm-hmm. like it's like, oh shit. Like, mm-hmm. so there things haven't changed since and even after my all mom of that, was 38. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, mm-hmm. it's becoming more visible yeah, and not getting better. And I think that that loss of hope, yeah, that fear and despair really is a big part of why it weighs so heavy. Yeah. Because back then they were like, it's cool, we can make change. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And now I watched something this morning. I almost want to play it if I if I can. It's an audio thing that I saw on Instagram. Come on, audio. That interlude. was, it's like, is that okay? Pro- producer, director, Crystal? Okay, well, I'm going to play it for y'all and we just going to listen to it. I'm going to stand but beside I it. But I heard something this morning and it was interesting. Hold on. Okay. All right. Uh, it was Am- Amanda Seals is literally reacting. She's just like pointing and saying like thumbs up. But this is this white woman speaking. Oh, I saw. Oh, this. I saw this. that. Oh, mm-hmm. you did. Okay. Did you see it? Mm-mm. Okay. I was going to stay away from the topic of race, but in light of everything that happened yesterday, um, I feel like this needs to be said. It's so important. Um, white women, we have to humble ourselves and listen to black women. Um, they've been paying attention, and we haven't. While we were getting whitewashed history in school. Um, they were getting actual history from their mothers and their grandmothers and their great grandmothers. Information was withheld from us. The patriarchy withheld this information from us. Um, and black women understand that in a way that we can't. They understand how the world works in a way that we've never been able to see. While we were enabling the patriarchy and white supremacy, they were educating themselves. And as a result, they are the most educated demographic in this country. We have to get out of the way and let them lead. They are the most qualified. Um, and it's in all of our best interest, period. This is not a drill, everybody. This is this is bad. She said this is not a drill. This is bad. And, and, mm-hmm. and obviously, I mean, not obviously. I hadn't looked at it that way. Meaning, I'm, I'm aware as a black woman, like yeah. what I was taught. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. We're all, and, and, you know, black men, but we're all a- aware of like what our parents had to share with us mm-hmm. and what they and their parents and grandparents, et cetera, had experienced, you know, from racism to, you know, being women in this country, et cetera. Like we are all aware, but I never thought about how shielded that made everyone else or mm-hmm. how shielded the opposite was. I did. Um, I just, I, I, I knew what we were being taught yeah. by adult white people right. was wrong. And I knew that young white people were, were uh, the beneficiaries of that. But I just hadn't thought about the way she said it and her being a white woman. I'm like, Oh, you mm-hmm. right, sis. You mm-hmm. right. I think I noticed that the most when I started dating a Chia, my husband, um, that's why I always say the most well-meaning white people are still, products of racism absolutely you know what i mean absolutely. you know what i mean yeah, and i think it's hurtful for someone to say oh i'm racist but i'm like there's different levels of racism you know what i mean mm-hmm. and you have to admit that it's impossible for someone to not be racist being born in this country that's not black when everything is rooted in racism mm-hmm. do you know what i mean mm-hmm. our history how it's taught and so it's not that you're intentionally being racist yeah. right mm-hmm. it's, it's just a level it's, of ignorance it's like a part yeah. of you yeah. like yeah. you are literally level, raised in it what i would use ignorance right i would not automatically say that everyone who isn't black is racist in this country i feel you i understand right. where you're coming right. from we've had this conversation before but right. i would say like there is a level of ignorance that mm-hmm. that woman was speaking to and no, at least absolutely. privilege. She didn't know. Yeah, yes. at least privilege. Right. But the problem, though, is is that when you don't label it correctly, then when you say things, um, it can become offensive and people don't realize that. Yeah. I think that's a lot of the arguments mm. and conflict that Chi and I would have because even him having our daughters, sometimes he would say stuff and I'd be like, that sounds so sexist. You mm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I know that mm. he's not sexist, but the problem is, is if you go out and say that, someone's going to think that you're sexist. Mm-hmm. And and Tommy does the same thing even with boys. Okay, we I'm tired of hearing him say boys will be boys, but we'll talk oh, about that later. Okay. Um, okay, so this this young generation, the one right below us, well, the two right below us, like being, what's the age? Being like, so well, okay, right. so you know we deal with a lot of like young people here, interns, stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. ranging from teenagers, okay. to like twenties, okay, right. Mm-hmm. We even had um, someone who worked on our film last last summer. That's your husband talking loud. Uh, not one cheer. Um, that was Keith. Don't do that. Not, that not was my Keith the other way. Not, all right, not all right. Not my cheer. 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 Don't put that on his spirit. We, ha- we had a um, we had someone who worked with us last year on a film who was like twenty four, and maybe not even that. And he, uh, we we were talking about pronouns because there was one person I was like I don't know if I should ask, yeah. you know what you know their pronouns are. Da, da, da. He was like well I call everyone they. 
Oh. And I was like, oh, oh that's oh. that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And he was like, it's it's like innate, like, duh, why would you not? Right. right. And the oh, way he wow. was explaining that, he's like I said, about 22 or something like that. And there's this because we're not used to that Mm -hmm. us and especially our parents. Right. Right. There's this like wokeness with that generation that is jarring sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's also something that I am starting to appreciate because as a person who has kids and as a person who's around a a lot of young people, it makes me more thoughtful about what I say, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even when I know I'm not being offensive or trying to I'm just trying to get it right. Or trying to just not offend. And so my point being, whether it's racism, whether it's sexism, whatever it is, is recognizing when you don't know everything. Oh, and recognizing yeah. when, hmm, is there a way I can be more thoughtful about this? Is there a way I can listen to understand? Mm-hmm. Is there a way too, I can though. use my words more carefully? Even you saying that, because now I just have compassion for like our parents and other people. Because when you think that you are a good person and you think that you have a good heart and someone says something to you like you're racist or you're yeah. sexist or you're being this, it's hard. It's not always easy to take that advice and change because you feel defensive. Like, yes, that's not my intention. Yes. So moving past your attention and focusing more on what's being received, I guess yeah. it's like the biggest struggle. But then there are also people who are just like, I think what you think is stupid. Mm. Yeah. And I'm set in my ways and I'm not changing. Right. There's a that's lot of fair. problems. Yeah. There's, right, there's we're a giving lot. a lot of grace, but we're, we're also go, talking we're going about down. Yeah. These, foolish ass, these foolish ass politicians. Yeah. And news, but yeah, news like workers. I, I don't know. I feel very depleted this week. Mm. Yeah. I do. I feel very depleted this week. And we had to go to, my son had a, like a chorus concert last night and they it was like big it was like all the schools mm-hmm. in the district that came and went to the high school and they performed out on the football field and it was like his first big concert and i literally was nervous the whole time mm. i Girl. was nervous the whole time yep i was like what the hell like i don't want him out of my sight i don't want him away like where you know and you think about your children going to school and these kids in texas and and then the discourse that happens amongst people saying that it's not guns and it's mentally Mental ill. Health I'm like, or no one's border patrol, had, right? Border patrol. Oh, how you want to go to? That makes me sick. Makes me so, so mad. Sick, yeah. And I'm just sitting here being like, I just, I, I'm just sick. I'm just sick to to see so much um, discourse between people who are arguing about all the wrong things, mm-hmm. who are not focused on actually what it is. It's like, okay, you. Bring up all the issues. Either way, this is a broken system, girl. Mm-hmm. And the all kids the, is gone, and, and the and kids the are, gone. are gone. Yeah, and those parents woke up without their children, <laughs> and that is awful. And so I don't know. I'm just I'm not I'm not okay this week. Mm-hmm. And I am like counting the days down to school is done, and I'm yeah. just like, can we just all be in the house, girl? Yeah, I'm just not between everything. Yeah, I'm emotional so because we all have kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think about our children, and I think about. You know, you, the safety and the trust that you should feel like you can have with your children in this world, you right. hope to have. Right. It's already stressful enough being a parent. It's already like, okay, a, a process of working on how to relinquish control and trust them when they're not around you and, and pray over them mm-hmm. and, and just pray that for their protection and guidance all when you're not there. But when you know there's just things that you really, really, really can't control mm-hmm. like that, yeah, mm-hmm. that's just terrifying. Yeah. And um, children deserve to grow up. Yeah, they deserve to live, and I just am like, I'm very, very heartbroken for those families. You know and what for... I was gonna say? I think I, I really do have PTSD because, mm-hmm. like, I feel myself being like disengaging from my emotions mm-hmm. because it's too much. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel extremely yep. overwhelmed to the point where I just choose not to feel anything. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I did that when my sister died. Like, I just disconnected. Like, this is too much. I don't have time to deal with this right now. Mm-hmm. You know, what's interesting. I've been talking to Mel a lot about like my parenting style with Amira and she's been giving me like really good advice and I listen to it all the time. And like, I'm, I always hear her voice whenever I'm saying something to Amira now, I'm like, what would Melanie say? <laughs> <laughs> um, and so ironically, after the shooting happened the next day, my daughter's best friend came to town with my mom. And I was like, do you guys want to watch Starbucks by yourself? And they were like, it's down now. It's not super far from our house, but you, you do know me, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't uh-huh. let Girl, her my go. my eyes went wide. I don't know. I don't let her I go like, anywhere. What? <laughs> and I let them go because, and my mom was like, she's worse than me. Like, helicopter parents. She you probably have a tracker like, on a mirror? I don't. But I had her, she had her phone and her best friend has her Apple watch. And yeah. so I'm like, okay, I know I can track you. Mm-hmm. But I felt like I had to let them go in that moment. And it was my mm-hmm. idea because if I didn't, I felt like I was about to re, like go worse 
my anxiety I was about to be cut and I was yeah. never going to let her go anywhere. And so mm. for me, it was like I had to just jump off the Counteract bridge. Counteract it. Yes, yeah, because I felt immediately <clears throat> like, see, this is why I homeschool my kids. And I was sending a mirror to public school next mm-hmm. year. I'm like, no, I'm not sending her. And I just felt myself going all the way mm-hmm. back. And I was like, no, I have to let her go. And when she came back alive, like it made me feel like <laughs> I'm going to be okay. Yeah. No, but seriously, yeah, do you know no, what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. like I have the worst anxiety to the yeah. point where I won't eat like I can't sleep sometimes like every little thing that she does like I'm I'm talking about like when we go to the park I'm I put my phone away like I watch my kids I follow mm-hmm. them to every yeah, little same. thing yeah I don't play those games mm-hmm. and so it's just not healthy though you mm-hmm. know what I mean it's to a point where it's unhealthy and I don't want my my friend Tiffany was like Ashley you are making your daughter have anxiety mm. and my mom gave me anxiety me and my mom were just talking about this on the car yesterday and she was just like I think I gave your little brother anxiety and I'm like yeah y'all are so high strung mm. and I'm the type of person like I don't like group emotions so when I see someone else being anxious I feel like I have to not be anxious mm-hmm. but then like I feel anxious, so I'm suppressing my own feelings. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Excuse me, 100%. but yeah. I had to learn that. I don't want to not detach. I don't feel like that's the right word, but like releasing that control out of like when peace was probably like one. Not mine. Sorry. Probably when peace was like um, mm, like two because I was traveling so much with makeup mm. and leaving her like with family if I'm out of the country or whatever because I'm like, okay, I still have to go to work. And, but I just remember being like, my baby, like the world, you know, and just kind of overthinking a lot. And then I called my mom. My mom was like, you have to let her live. Like Mm -hmm. you gotta, you have to release that. So I remember just crying, like, what if something happens? I'll wake up having nightmares. And then I was like, God, like, I'm just going to trust that God is going to take care of her. I'm like, but life and shit happens. Like, Mm. you know, and it's like, am I going to be stressed out? Or am I just going to like take everything one day at a time and like be in this moment right now? She's healthy right now. Everything right. is okay. Like just one day at a time. Because it is overwhelming and it's it is a lot going on yeah. outside, yeah. you know. But I think that that releasing is important. Even when I go to the restaurant, or, like the same me and the kids are at the restaurant. I've taught peace. Like go up there and ask for what you need. Right. You yes. know? Like I need yes. you to communicate. And Zen will be like, mom, can I go too? I'm like, yes. I yep. need you guys to understand like yes you guys are young but you're not too young to do things independently I'm like but I think in the long run it's gonna allow me to be like no I've seen I've trained mm-hmm. them to know that they can they'll they're able to be aware of like if anything's going on yeah. obviously to the the best of their control no but, but it, it is it is a good practice yeah because yeah. you have to like do almost yeah. like little test runs with your kids to yes, be like who girl. are you in this moment girl mm-hmm. no for real I watch my son you know he's so free like we went to the beach the other day and he was playing with these two little boys and there was a seal that was going through the waves oh, like wow. across like across the shore and his the little friend that he was playing with went to go follow it with his mom and I watched Cameron follow that little boy and just watch. And I sat and my instinct was to be like, Cameron, get back mm-hmm. here. But I just went, I watched, I sat and I watched him. I was like, as long as I can see him, mm-hmm. We're going to be okay. So I just let him go and I let him go. And then I watched him and I saw him be completely like unaware that how far he was away from me. Mm. But because I could still see him, I wasn't panicking. Mm -hmm. And then I saw when they started to come back and then he came back. And and when he came over, I said, hey, buddy, I'm like, I know you got excited when you were watching the seal. I was like, but if you're going to go somewhere, you have to tell mommy, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm looking at you, but you have to tell me. And so it's like these little small moments where you get to see who your kids are how they might respond in a situation do help to give you some ease to be like, okay, I've, I've seen, seen him be tested and I see how he reacts. So Mm -hmm. you kind of have to, you kind of have to guide that when you see certain things and behaviors in your children. I think that's the thing. It's hard to articulate that to your child, why you create the certain type of rules because you do know your child. Right. Mm -hmm. I just started letting y'all might think this is crazy. Amir go to the bathroom by herself. Like when we go to restaurants and she's 13. I don't think it's crazy. Okay. Cause I would always go with her. I'd be like, okay, well we're all going. Wow. I always take her to the bathroom or uh, what? Chia yeah. usually takes the little girls. Cause I told you about my public mm-hmm. restroom phobia. But <laughs> if Amir has to go to the restroom, I go with her because I'm just like, in my mind, I just think about all these different scenarios of yeah. like, what's she going to do? Like she can't fight some grown man or what there's some weirdo in the bathroom right. or, mm-hmm. you know, like any kind of thing. And so I always feel like I have to protect her, but then how is she developing skills to trust herself yeah. Yeah. to protect herself yeah. if I'm always doing it for her? And mm-hmm. we, t- we talked about this yep. too because my mom was so tight with the reins with me mm-hmm. that I, w- I had to lie. Like most of my life I had to lie to just to be able to do simple things. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you know, and, and I was never even trying to do nothing crazy. Right, right, right. But just to be able to do basic things 
I had to lie. And so it was a situation I remember when I started traveling for work and I remember I would go to the States and it was the craziest thing because my mom was so strict with me. And then when I came home and I was like, yeah, I met a woman and I'm going to California to work on music. And my mom was like, what? (laughs) My mom had one conversation with my old manager who was a woman and a mother. She sent her all her ID. They had a conversation and my mom was like, let me go. And I was shocked. Wow. Like I was shocked. Like I thought it was going to be a huge fight. It mm-hmm. wasn't. How old were you? 21. Oh wow. oh, wow. Yeah. And you know, I was shocked that my mom was like, I'm coming. Like not, I'm coming. My mom was like, okay. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Like divine. But, right. Too. But yeah. totally to divine. You but then when I would come home, my mom would try to put like the law on me again. At like, 21? Oh, oh, girl, I was well into almost 23, 24. And my mom was still like, you have to be home by midnight what yes and, oh, I, and I was wow. like mom. why was she afraid of what would happen or was she just like she just my mom was just I to be honest it's control mm-hmm. yeah it's totally control and I think my mom operated from that space of like well things can get crazy if you stay out late that's and, what I was gonna say yeah. but control you know, is rooted in fear though yeah. it is rooted yeah. in fear yeah. right and you said she was a younger she got married my at mom a young was married age. with a kid at yeah. 19 so and, she didn't get to and also she, understand that aspect of life she also comes from she didn't she doesn't exactly and she also comes from that like well girl children are different than boy children yeah. and like girls need to be a certain way like totally different mm-hmm. and I remember I came home and I was like mom I've literally been in LA for three months by myself <laughs> <Right>. like <laughs> I come and go as I please I live out of a hotel tell like I don't have anybody telling me where and when how to show up Mm -hmm. and I asked her I was like at what point are you going to trust that what you taught me Mm -hmm. I can apply in my own life Mm -hmm. and she looked at me like well damn like Mm -hmm. that's facts Mm -hmm. and when I had that conversation with her it changed (laughs) yeah she started to be like oh oh, okay that's so crazy but I had to leave I truly had to leave home to like really find my independence my mom said the same thing to me so we just had a really good talk yesterday and she said the same thing you just said that her mom taught her all of these things but didn't let her apply them right mm. and she had to leave home in order to feel like she had agency over her body Correct. and her life yeah and she was like i never wanted to go back home because it was like why did you teach me all this stuff but then you don't trust me to do it right and cuz we were just talking about me and parenting amira and doing everything for her just because I wanted to and then thinking like just little things that she doesn't innately think about and it's because I I always did it for her. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm not teaching her to use her mind because mm-hmm. I'm always like, I'll cut that. Like I was still, you guys, it's bad. I was still like cutting her pancakes for her last year. She's 12. Mm. And I would like, f- like cut them up for her and, and the thing is, she didn't care. She's like, yeah, serve whatever. me. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, that's all she knows. Right. But, it's also but then habit, I was like, why right? you don't know how to cut your pancakes? And then she was like, because you always cut mm. them. And then when I start having more kids, it starts like that type of stuff. You start to notice you'd be irritated. Like, why are you like, asking yo, me? Yo, I need you to do yeah. it. And you hers and hers. And she really <laughs> didn't know how. Girl. And I was like, oh yeah. my God. Like, yeah. So that control mm. and that fear can cripple your children and it doesn't help them in the long run. You know what I mean? But it's like, you don't see that when you're Mm -hmm. doing it because you really just want to do everything for them, protect them and they're your babies, but it's just not beneficial. But I will say this, like my mom instilling a certain level of awareness, Mm -hmm. consequence, fear in me per se. Mm -hmm. I don't really like to, I wouldn't suggest operating from fear, right? but being aware. Yes. um, Kept me out of a lot of trouble. Yeah. I will say that. Like, I didn't make too many crazy decisions in my life as far as like situations where I had to like call a friend for help or anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was able to navigate and I do recognize that my mom's level of structure, I was able to apply to my own life. You know, so there are certain things like uh, when we talked about boundaries, like those types of things, like they do apply. But yeah, we, we don't want to be crippling the babies with anxiety. And again, like in this time, and I don't know if you guys, did you guys talk to your kids about what happened in Texas? Mm-mm. We just had that conversation this morning, me and their dad. And I was just like, what do you think? Because also, I don't um, I don't want to like freak her out. Peace, right. is, peace is super sensitive. Yes. And she's very, very empathetic. And I think that she's just too young because mm-hmm. also she can't, what is she going to do? You know, mm-hmm. like, what are they going to do? As adults, we don't even know what to do. So it's like. So I agree. I feel like my children are too young to, for that conversation. There's nothing that they're going to understand about yeah. that. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna be them. sad. Right. Some yeah, people have paranoid. had to explain yeah. it to young kids or find a way to explain it to young kids because school, certain schools have increased security now. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, I yeah. mean, I guess we're fortunate. No, it's a double-edged sword. But, you know, that we haven't absolutely had to explain it to them. But I certainly was worried that, like, he would hear about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, but thankfully that hasn't happened. But, I still don't yeah. understand how 
because I don't know how all public schools work, but I thought that people had to get like a approved to go in a building like how is someone able to just walk into a like school a, building like a back gate or something they can climb a fence oh. i talked to pieces uh principal about it yesterday okay and she was saying that they had um a walkthrough with a bunch of police like months ago mm -hmm. and the police can basically tell you like oh if somebody was in this building here they can shoot over here oh, and wow. teaches them like okay maybe you need to build a bigger wall here mm -hmm. or put you know but there's there's so many different ways. Yeah. Like literally a back fence. But like, can we just even talk about the fact that this is a conversation that has yeah. to happen here? Right. Like mm -hmm. what? Right. Like my nieces growing up in Canada, this is not even a thing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I'm not, never went to school worried about like, when I went to school in the city and we were living in, in like a neighborhood, you were worried about getting shot in crossfire because you lived, we were in a bad neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not because you thought it was going to ever reach your school. Right. right. Like Girl. not because you thought you would be at recess and having to fear for your life. Like, the fact that this is only happening here, why this cannot be identified and really be like, mm, maybe we're the problem, is beyond me. Well, mm -hmm. just to come back to that, that's yeah, what I said. I, they benefits, fully know. Yeah, they are fully aware. Be, they know. Them. Yeah, because what the amount? What was it like? Two hundred and ninety-nine. Two hundred and twelve. I don't even remember hearing about two hundred and twelve mass shootings. Do you? No. I don't even remember hearing about it, which is crazy because that's that makes it even worse. The fact that we're like yes. There, people were sad about this shooting happening because they were feeling like it was taken away from the grocery store. And I'm like, that's sad. That's mm -hmm. sad that that's like your mindset, but I understand why. But it's like so many things are happening. People don't even feel like they have enough time to mourn. To mourn, yeah. grieve, what, catch yeah, up, process. It's like the next thing happened. And then it's the anniversary of George Floyd. Yeah. And like, it's mm -hmm. very yep. like, I think it's just really a lot for everybody. And I feel like everybody is walking around with functional depression. Well, Everybody we, is. Yes. Well, yeah. we're not designed to to carry this. No. Yeah. Like, no. what? Like, never in the history of life have we been this exposed mm -hmm. to everything that's happening at all times. You yeah. know, when you were when we were younger and there was no internet or whatever right. it was, like, you didn't know anything that went on in the next state over exactly. unless you watch national news or yep. something. You know, like, I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot. And so, like, the necessity to shut down mm -hmm. is almost like a, a mode of survival for us right yeah. now. You know, like I don't want to say we become desensitized and we've got to detach and we've got to yeah. log off because that's not doing anything. We have to stay in the passion of it. But we also have to protect our mental health Girl. Yeah. and our well-being yeah. because we are raising children. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to ask you, what do you guys do like during this week and other times? Like, What is your thing that you do or something that you practice to help you like recharge or feel better or I don't know because I really don't know because ain't nothing really I don't, right. what what I, do something one of the things I was going to say yeah, yeah. is like okay. there's no right or wrong answer mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like as long as you're and, and even if this is the case it means seek help but like as long as you're not like hurting yourself or someone else mm -hmm. there's no right or wrong answer to like what you need to ha have peace and so like similarly I forgot which one of you guys said it maybe Melanie but like I just like am kind of numb maybe that was you mm -hmm. I'm just like kind of numb yeah. it's like I just focus on the the children my mm -hmm, children mm -hmm. i do look at social media um it's a double-edged sword i don't think that that's necessarily bad or good i think we all have to know when to like shut it off yeah. but like i i do because i think there there are things that inspire me to see there are conversations that are being had where i'm like yes and that give me information mm -hmm. too but it's painful to see those that just don't care or think that it's the issues are mental health and border border patrol um but for me like i said i'm pretty numb and just do whatever i can to like maintain some sense of like moving forward yeah. mm -hmm. you have to you really Same. have to or yeah mo we're moving away doing something I, I like to do like fun things with the kids park picnic yeah. like just something to just like get out of that space go you know yeah. i'm like yeah no because it's a lot it's a lot the other night after texas happened I've, i just it just kind of happened so that jared kaya cam and i were all in cam's bed reading his bedtime story like Aww. and I just had that moment of like extreme gratitude mm -hmm. to be present mm -hmm. and safe and surrounded by my family mm -hmm. and in love and peace. And it just really, it, that, that was a joyful moment for me because I was like, we don't often get to do that. Sometimes Jared is working, I'm, we're man to man defense, he's doing a baby, I'm doing a kid or vice versa. And so for us to just all be together in that moment was a joyful moment. So mm. I'm trying to just make sure that we have more and as many of those moments. And I think it's it's really important yeah. um, that yeah. we do find it. That's like the all you can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whew. All right, y'all. Well, 
we getting through it. Yeah. You know, one day at a time. One moment. One at hug a time, at a time. Yeah. One edible at a time. <laughs> What'd you say? One, one edible at a time. time. <laughs> one glass of wine at one a time. One wine at a time. One joint at a time. <laughs> one edible at a time. <laughs> All right. And we wish the same for our Mama's Den fam. Yes. yes. You know, do what you got to do to keep your peace. Amen. 